This is Tiger Tom reporting in, and we're going to kill the um, space observatory. I, I bought a new watch, and, and, it, and we have to go at half past three, and it's even past half past three. I made food. We better get an Uber. Yeah, that's it. Make sure we've got our adults supervised. No world. Get up to the bottom of the tide. I put a battery on the bottom of the tide. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Just giving off. Bye, our little electrons. Do they look like little bubbles coming off it? Excellent. That's what we're looking for. Look when I turn it around. Now the other one's giving off more gas. Okay then, guys. What's your first impression with this one, eh? How much did it cost? I like your first question, that's excellent. Around right about £30,000. Is that, is that a lot? Yeah? Do you have one like this at home? Is it yours like this at home? No? Is it much smaller? Yeah? So yeah, I mean, it's a very big telescope, as you can see. It's a lot bigger than a, a telescope you might own at home. It's very technical. It, it looks very technical, doesn't it? But it's not really much. To be honest, it isn't. Uh, you know what I can do, actually? I can control it just with a joystick. Do you know what I'm going? Um, have a go. Come on, over. There's a joystick just here, and what I want you to do is I want you to just press it up for me. So just keep it, keep it held up. That's it. And you can see it moving around. So you can control it just with a joystick, and then you can point it to any part of the sky you want. I bet you feel really powerful now, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and telescopes are all about collecting light. So the wider a telescope is, the better they are normally. So it's not about how long the telescope is, it's about how wide it is. If I open the telescope up, if I take the lens cap off the front, what you should see is the mirror. I'll just move it down a little bit more so you can see it, because... No, I'll move it down a bit more so you can see it. And if you look into the front of the tube, you'll see the big mirror. See it? Can you see your face in it? Hello, Thomas. You see it? Yeah? So that mirror, okay, is 16 inches wide. Now, I'm not quite sure if you know how big the lens is in your telescope at home, uh, but normally it might be about two or three, four inches wide. But this has a 16 inch mirror, so that means it can collect a lot of light. It can collect a lot more light than what your eyes can collect. So that's the, that's the objective of a telescope, is to gather light. Because when we look at things in the night sky, they're all very faint, so you can't see them with your eyes. So by using a big mirror, you collect more light, and then the objects that you look at in the sky are much brighter. So what I've got on the screen here is something that I urge you all to get when you get home. This is software that you can download for free. Uh, you can get it on your computer at home, no bother at all. And it's called Stellarium, right? And it shows us the night sky. What I can do is I can fast forward time. 
and I can see the stars coming out as the night goes on. So I'm going to fast forward time and you start seeing more and more stars coming out and you can also see the stars all moving across the sky as well. So you've got, so I'll pause there. Is that, what's that big star? That's Capella, that's the one that's, that we just saw there. And just to, just to prove I was, I was correct, there you go, Capella. <laughs> so it is, a, it is a bright star. Uh, you know what, it is actually, it's not, a, it's not an image of a shooting star, but it's showing us where there's a meteor shower. So this is showing us a certain meteor shower in the sky, so that's what a shooting star is. So a constellation, a constellation is a pattern of stars in the night sky. So the entire night sky is broken up into 88 sections, and that's our way of mapping the sky, so we can, it helps us navigate our way around the sky by using these certain patterns. So you've got things like Orion the Hunter, which is a very famous one that's out tonight. I know that. You know that one? Yeah. Where's the belt? See the belt? But wasn't it in the corner there? There's Orion. See if you can see the belt. Can't you um, like, put this road on where you actually see the picture? You can, yeah. I'm going to get that in a second. <laughs> you can, yeah. but do you want to do this for me? You, you've got to them. Do you want to do this for me? Yeah. If I press this button here, that's what it's supposed to look like. So this is the constellation artwork. I don't know how it doesn't look anything like it without the... Yeah, it doesn't, you're right, you're right. So can you see Taurus the bull? Do you think it looks like a bull if I turn the bull off? It's supposed to look like a bull apparently. So the V-shape that you see here, this is Taurus's head. And you can easily find Taurus just by looking for Orion. So if you look for Orion in the sky, you see the belt just here. You can draw a line through the belt. Imagine an imaginary line going through the belt. And it points to the bright star Aldebaran. And Aldebaran is the eye of the bull. So it's the bull's eye. It's a red star. It's a red star because it's a cool star. So cool stars appear to be red because their surfaces are fairly cool at around about 3,000 degrees. If we look at things like Europa, Europa is an icy world. Yeah, it's made of ice. There's a salt water ocean beneath the ice of, of Europa. Um, Callisto and Ganymede aren't as interesting as Europa and Io, but Europa and Io are very, very different. But Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. She has the title of the largest moon in the solar system. It's actually bigger than our well, it's, big, it's bigger than our moon. It's, big, it's even bigger than the planet Mercury. So it's, if, if Ganymede orbited the, moon, the sun itself, it would be classed as a planet. That's how big it is. So it's quite a large, quite a large world. And yes, Mars is coming as well. So we'll zoom into Mars to finish on because I know you're dying to see Mars. Oh, so what, what is this? Neil? You're going to see that with Adam very shortly. He's going to show you how it all works. That's how you crack the, that that's you crack the roof around. The it does, yeah. So there's Mars, that's it there. Is there mountains on Mars? There are mountains on Mars, yeah. The Mars has the biggest volcano. It does. I forgot what I don't have to do this, do I? You know it's already, don't you? Hi guys, thanks for thinking we're all the way around. Thank you, Space Bear, everyone. Oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> Definitely thank you, Space Bear. <laughs> Okay, is this everyone? Yeah. Excellent. So, hello. This is the night sky, so it's showing us everything that's up there in the sky right now. So we can see all of these different stars, for example. So, well, uh, you can see a yellow circle right here. That's where the telescope is currently pointed. Somewhere up in the sky, sort of towards the southwest. You can see south there, west there. It's high up towards the southwest. That's where the telescope is pointing. And it's actually really, really easy to use. All we have to do is we have to click on something on the screen, any star or anything that we fancy looking at, and the telescope will move there automatically. So who fancies staying in the telescope? So, so I've got this infrared camera. Now we can see everyone in infrared light. <laughs> so, my expert on infrared light, the heat light, when we look at you, do you notice something weird about your glasses? Yeah, they're blue. They're blue, aren't they? Yeah, so it looks like you're wearing sunglasses, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. When you're clearly not. <laughs> so, any idea what's happening here, anyone? Um, when we look at the glasses, um, what's happening is the infrared light is starting to be blocked by the glass, the glasses. So there's different type of light. I mean, obviously there's visible light. Oh my there. gosh, look at my hood. <laughs> I'm not that cold. <laughs> So the visible light is passing through the glasses, allowing us to look at everything around us. I mean, that's how you're seeing the screen right now. But if we used an infrared camera to look at uh, the galaxy instead, these are the sorts of views we can get. We can start to see a whole lot more detail. We can basically see through 
all of this gas and dust. So light can see through the bin bag, because it's blocking the visible light, the infrared light passing through. That's exactly the case uh, in the Andromeda galaxy or in our own galaxy, in fact. Stars don't just shoot through space, they're big balls of fire millions of miles wide and flying through space and destroying planets would be terrifying, so that's not what happens here, that's not what we're seeing. What we're seeing here is bits of debris entering Earth's atmosphere and burning up as it does that. And just going back to the word meteor actually, let's just um, uh, look at those bits of terminology that we use for these things. So meteor and meteorite are probably the two things that you hear most of. So a meteor is when it's interacting with the Earth's atmosphere. A meteorite is if it's lucky enough to make it all the way through and land on Earth and we can go pick it up. So this is a meteorite. When it's burning up in the atmosphere, it's a meteor. But this is a comet. Now comets are big dirty snowballs, big piles of ice and rock. That I'm going to tell you about in a bit, you jump in the middle. <laughs> Stop surrounding me for brand. I can see it. I'm going to pick them up and then we take them back to a lab, crack them open and decipher what type of rock it is. And because we know what Martian rock's like, then we know that this is maybe Martian rock. But also, when we take it to a clean room, we smash open a rock, a little bit of atmosphere leaks out of it as well. And sometimes, most, most rockets that launch, like this, this one for example, this was carrying food and water and experiments for the International Space Station, but sometimes rockets carry people. This was the rocket that carried Tim Peake into to the International Space Station with, um, it has 21 engines firing when it's taking off. But these rockets, when they're finished, when all of this fuel has been expended, they just dropped into the ocean, or dropped into the desert. And then they go and salvage all the bits. And if somebody wants to launch another rocket, or, or send something else to space, they have to build an entire new rocket. And it costs £62 million pounds to launch one of these. And the way they want to make rockets cheaper is to make them reusable. Nobody would go, um, no one would drive anywhere if you had to rebuild a car after every journey. But since you can make tens of thousands of journeys in your car, it may be worth a few thousand pounds of money. So this is a rocket animated by a company called SpaceX. Nominal is the space word for good. Two boosters, now separated, and they're ready, getting ready to fly back to Earth to be recycled. Both of those side boosters have already been to space and landed before. One of them was the one we watched land on the landing pad. These are actually two different, different views, the different boosters. the payloads, the car, it's still in the bearing, it's still in the nose cone, and they're about to deploy it.
for the next four and a half hours they just broadcast this view. <laughs> There's a copy of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy of the Blood Box and it's how Thomas, what was your favourite part? And um, when we looked at the solar system. We looked at the rockets. What was your favourite bit, William? When we looked at the rockets. Just when we get a favourite bit. What was your favourite? My favourite bit was when we got to hold the meteor. Cool. I what was Daddy's like... favourite bit? Oh, I don't know. I liked all of it. I liked all of it as well, except for how cold it was and how dark it gets. Yes. Yeah.